Yahweh, Yeshuach, and the gods of Ugarit. Molech, the god of infanticide. Four Propositions by Dr. Galen Currach. Introduction Judge Janine Piro, Fox News, February 2nd, 2019. What I'm about to tell you is extremely important to me. It represents the worst cultural shift that I've witnessed in this country. And it matters not if you're pro-choice, pro-life, or an agnostic. You must take notice. I'm talking about the legalization of infanticide, or to put it in layman's terms, absolution, for the intentional killing of full-term babies. Babies born alive who were then murdered or allowed to die on the mother's say-so. The procedure is described by Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, a pediatric neurologist, no less, who coldly describes and defends the killing of babies after they are born. If a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen. Um, the infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. Now, he didn't say how, but the meaning is clear. If the mother wants the baby dead, the baby dies. And you can now add New York State. They now allow third-term abortions where a baby can be delivered full-term, born alive, and then allowed to die or worse. Proposition 1. From ancient times, Middle Eastern societies believed in a god of the underworld that demanded child sacrifices. Amongst cuneiform funerary texts from ancient Ugarit are found mention of the Rapuma, underworld deities associated with the royal cult of the dead. These Rapuma are associated with Matuma, the dead, and with Malku Almu, an everlasting king to whom ancient worshippers would offer a Shalmu, peace offering. This latter deity may be identified with Malikum, known across the ancient Middle East as a god of the netherworld. He appears in Quran 4377 as an angel of hell. They will cry, O Malik. May your Lord finish us off. He will say, In truth, you are here to stay eternally. In Punic literature, Mok or Muk occurs in the phrases sacrifice of sheep and sacrifice of human, that is, child sacrifice, pronounced in Latin as mok. Bones of human children and of small animals have been found at Carthage, in Sicily and in Sardinia, where they may have served as votive offerings to the god Bachal Hamon. Proposition 2 In the Holy Bible, Malikul becomes Molech, the abomination of the Ammonites. As early as the 15th century BCE, the law of Moses warned against infanticide. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Say to the people of Israel, Any one of the people of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn in Israel, who gives any of his children to, to Molech, shall surely be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones. I myself will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people, because he has given one of his children to Molech, to make my sanctuary unclean and to profane my holy name. And if the people of the land do at all close their eyes to that man, when he gives one of his children to Molech, and do not put him to death, then I will set my face against that man and against his clan, 
and will cut them off from among their people, him and all who follow him in whoring after Molech. By the 7th century BCE, King Josiah made an effort to put a stop to infanticide at Jerusalem. He defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, that no one might burn his son or his daughter as an offering to Molech. The prophet Jeremiah supported the king in this effort. They built the high places of Baal in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to offer up their sons and daughters to Molech, though I did not command them, nor did it enter into my mind, that they should do this abomination, to cause Judah to sin. A generation later in Babylon the prophet Ezekiel reproached the Israelites. You took your sons and your daughters, whom you had borne to me, and these you sacrificed to them to be devoured. Were your whorings so small a matter that you slaughtered my children and delivered them up as an offering by fire to them? They have committed adultery, and blood is on their hands. With their idols they have committed adultery, and they have even offered up to them for food, the children whom they had borne to me. In the first century CE, the martyr Stephen quoted the prophet Amos to corrupt leaders about their national sins, for which reason they stoned him to death the same hour. You took up the tent of Molech, and the star of your god Rephan, the images that you made to worship, and I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Proposition 3 God will judge individuals who commit infanticide and nations that condone infanticide. All newborn children belong to God, not to their parents. Governments are responsible to God to prevent infanticide. Infanticide is motivated by an evil spirit named Moloch. Those who commit infanticide become guilty of murder. God places a curse upon individuals and clans that commit infanticide. God tears down governments and nations that legalize infanticide. Proposition 4 Christian believers must take a stand for life against infanticide. Refuse to patronize businesses, media, and churches that promote infanticide. Educate fellow believers on the sanctity of human life before God. Financially support poor unmarried mothers. Provide adoption for children whose mothers reject them. Put pressure on lawmakers to protect infant life. Pray God to change medical practitioners who perform infanticide. Pray God to change political authorities who condone infanticide. Conclusion I call heaven and earth to witness against you today, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life, that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him, for he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land 